Hello, hello everybody. This is the Eric Freeze, and today we have some turbo fans. And this video is not going to be about the fans that are featured before you, but just kind of more of just a bit of uh, general information for the forecoming of this video. So I believe turbo fans came around about in the uh, 1980s, late 80s, when Duracraft originally released these under the Air Duracraft name, I think in 1988. I think they were sold through the Sears catalog, and during the time there was a few others. The Lasco Breeze machine, which may have actually predated the Duracraft, um, but for my knowledge, Duracraft was the first brand to use the name Turbofan, and in Honeywell in the 2000s, uh, trademarked the name Turbo Force, um, and that's kind of where I get the name Turbo Fan from. A few other collectors consider fans of this type Turbo Fans, and kind of the whole purpose of Turbo Fans is to be a small plastic fan um, that can typically pivot. They don't have to pivot, but it's normally a small plastic circular fan that is supposed to have power equivalent of a 12-inch oscillating fan and can be moved around easily and be portable, making them good for places such as dorm rooms, offices, bedrooms, or anywhere where you need a good breeze, but you don't want to drag a 12-inch oscillating fan or 20-inch box fan around. Uh, typically, turbo fans are in the, they, they pretty much range from anywhere between six to 10 inches. Um, I just have a few examples for over the years, like a Honeywell HD900, which is probably the most common turbo fan, uh, Duracraft, uh, really late model liquid cool operator and Alaska Breeze machine. Um, these are just kind of some common fans, well, Lakewood isn't, but good examples of them. And some could argue and say that the first turbo fans were those old Vornado ones from like the 1950s or whatever. Um, I don't know what they called them, but uh, Vornado actually still makes a variant of those to this day, but it's just an all-metal fan. Um, right here is a size comparison against a Honeywell HT900 and a traditional 12-inch oscillating fan, and I will just say it's about half the size of a traditional 12-inch oscillating fan. This is a pretty standard modern one. This is a SMC or Medea product. Um, ocean air labeled fan, um, but it's very similar to the mainstays Hampton Bay or Medea made um, oscillating fans that you can buy today at Walfart. So there's that. And this video isn't really about these fans to say, but something just a very strange product with false advertising and just a whole bunch of Chinese. And this is. The Firm Star Turbo Fan. Um, this doesn't really look like a turbo fan, um, but it, it, yeah, this looks like a traditional tower fan from the late '90s, early 2000s. I have no idea of an OEM on this. I'm, I'm thinking, like Yongxing or something, electric company. I, I always forget the name. It's like, it's like YX is the initials. Um, I've seen that brand make a lot of Aloha Breeze stuff and a variant of a tower fan similar to this that I saw at a thrift store at one point in time. Um, but it's kind of strange. Uh, I picked this up for $10 at the thrifts. I remember seeing tower fans like this all over the place as a kid. Uh, sold at various stores. Um, I like the basic No Thrills box uh, that they want you to recycle, and apparently the fan is ETL listed for whatever that's worth. Uh, that just probably means that they're too cheap to afford um, getting it tested by Underwriters Laboratories then. Um, the, on the, this side of the box, they give you a nice carrying handle indicated by this picture of a house. And with the loving text of Turbo Fan. Um, get you some general information here. 
Ugh. Maybe I should have paused the camera before doing this. That may have been better. Uh, 120 volts AC, frequency 60 hertz, uh, 40 watts. The cooler is white. Um, and the measurement is 760 times 160 times 225 millimeters, which I don't think we use that here in the U.S. Um, has a NW of 45 kilograms and a thing a GW of 5 kilograms and the shipping mark is unknown and as you can tell it's from a firm star so that means that must be a pretty hard star warning to reduce the risk of electric shock and injury to persons do not use in a window. I have no idea how someone's going to be able to fit this thing in a window unless if it's like a sliding glass door, which is technically a window, or a large casement window. I've had this thing for about three weeks now and I haven't gotten around to unboxing it, so um, we'll unbox it and compare it to a traditional turbo fan and a 12 inch oscillating fan, which I believe that's what turbo fans were designed to replace. I have no idea how this box comes apart. It looks fairly yellow. Here is one of the feet, which has a nice metal base on it. So that's pretty good. If I can get it back in the plastoid wrap, which I don't understand the point of, because I'm going to have to get it out again. Here's the other foot. We have the manual, important safety instructions. Um, warning, to reduce the risk of fire, electric shock, or injury. Do not use this fan with any solid state speed control device. I, I don't know why you would. I doubt there's an outlet that's controlled by like a solid state variable speed control. Do not use in a window. That's kind of unlikely because this is a very awkward shape and I don't think it would be able to uh, be used. Turbo fan must be installed with base um, that are marked on intersection manual. Okay to indicate stability with double space, this model or other base contact be substituted. This appliance has a polarized plug, one way on it. It's just explaining what a polarized plug is. Uh, the risk of electric shock, the plug is intended to fit double space in a polarized outlet only one way. If the plug does not fit fully in the outlet, reverse the plug and if still does not fit, contact Qualified electrician, do not attempt to defeat the safety feature. Um, I think what I mean by defeat the safety feature is take a belt sander or something and rub down on the prongs until it, it no longer exists. It's just kind of common sense here. Um, have a look at this manual. Um, it gives you a parts list and just kind of various information. I don't feel like reading all of this. I'll skim over this and see if there's any chinglish. Uh, pass cord 9 through the whole A of the base. Oh, it's figures. Insert the front of case. Insert the front case in the base. Turn butterfly screw. Never heard the word butterfly screw before. I can't see. Points of butterfly screw is 10. You can't even see it. It looks like a wing nut. I guess we'll see. We find it in the packaging. Uh, to adjust the speed, a uh, simple push button. It's pretty much just explaining how the push buttons work. Run direction change and five horizontal gra gra graduations. That is not a spelling mistake, it's just me not knowing how to spell. Uh, not oscillate when the push button. Yes, not oscillate when the push button. Okay, by setting the timer at the desired time, the fan will automatically uh, stop when the time comes. When using the timer, set knob at on. If the knob is set off, the fan will not operate um, if you push the push button switch. And then it's just giving you the same specifications. This is a model number FS3-29TF. Um, I 
I wonder if the name Tower Fan was trademarked, and that's the reasoning why the name Turbo Fan was used. I'm, I'm not too sure about that one. We have some polystyrene. This thing is kind of yellowed. I wonder if it sat in like a uh, hot garage or something for an extended amount of time. That's quite dusty in here. I'm going to guess this fan was used, and whenever the fan was not in service, they put it in the box. We have two thumb screws, which I'm going to guess that's what they referred to as the butterfly screws. Um, let's see if there's more of those. Um, it doesn't say an OEM. Just saying Okay, just giving like this the same notification of not using fan and windows. Um maybe when I package this back up I will do a a caring job of That goes on the other way. This on here to prevent the fan from getting, that was loud. Prevent the fan from getting scratched or whatever. Well, I think it just uses a singular set of of screws. It looks like both these base pieces kind of interlock into each other. I gotta see if this is even being picked up on the camera, because I might be working up here, which I think I, I am. Jeez. Oh, something I did know, which I forgot to say, is this fan does not have a timer, so I'm guessing it was like a uh, higher-end model that had the timer, and this one just does not have the timer. You have these two base pieces. I think it goes on like this. Looks like the cord. This goes on first. And the cord goes through here. There's a little channel. I want to know when this fan was made. And then this piece here goes kind of through this. This feels very cheesy. It does kind of clip into here. And the only sort of thing that just kind of screws it together are these quote unquote butterfly screws, or as I traditionally call them, thumb nuts. So I don't, I, I, I can't see how this basic thumb nut resembles a uh, butterfly. Even the picture in the box doesn't depict one with a timer. I was kind of hoping for a bit more uh, chinglish on the operating instructions, but I guess I was kind of let down with that remark. I will say it has, some, has these metal plates in the base that I did show, I think, earlier. I'm wondering if if the reasoning for that is for uh, stability or structure to kind of help the uh, plastoid, typical tower fan, it has some five-way oscillation. I think there's some cry marks down the side of it, like someone's been in there to service it. So whoever had this, they definitely took care of it if they still have the box that it came in originally. Uh, let me get the kilowatts and stuff set up, and then we can have a closer look. Well, I got the kilowatts set up. I am looking at it. It's a bit more yellowed on the front and right side than it is kind of on the left. Um, I guess we'll fire it up and see how it runs. Um, I don't know. I thought I had first impressions. It has a kind of a smaller size. A PSC motor in it, and of course, just a traditional 
uh, synchronous motor for the oscillation. It has this nice switch cover, and it has the Firm Star branding up on the control panel, which I'll show later off in the video. Um, we'll, fi we'll fire it up on the low speed setting. Let me turn the air conditioner on. Oops. It's very quiet, but it is to be expected. It's moving a okay amount of air. There's like a uh, scraping noise coming from up here at the top. It's moving pretty good air actually. For a tower fan, it seems like the air is kind of thin. It kind of goes more towards this way. I'll, I'll probably point the fan over just in case if it's blowing up in the microphone. I'll say it's pretty powerful. It's just, it's kind of just very angled in one direction. It's not like a traditional um, style of fan where it just pushes air out in like kind of a wider path. This is very small. That's a big increase. This has a good bit of power to it. I don't know if you can hear that air movement on the microphone. It's not too loud either. These tend to be pretty quiet. I, I do really like this fan. This is way better than the modern Holmes Power fan uh, that I got recently and that I'm servicing. And maybe I'll make a comparison once I get that one finished up. But say it's, it isn't, this isn't that bad. Here's the oscillation. The oscillations have appeared to break, um, drawing 41 watts, so just one watt over the allowance, uh, 0.33 amps, and a power factor of 99, I mean of 0.99, so it's almost a full power factor. So once again, these PSC motors are pretty good with go back over to amps, engage the sad motor, it just draws an extra 0.5 amps, and it looks like it just adds an extra watt and a half. It kind of sucks that the oscillation doesn't work on this, because the airflow coming out of this is like so skinny. Um, it, it, it's not really that useful. I kind of would like for a fan like this to distribute the air a bit better, and I don't think it will distribute the air as needed if it's like this, where it's just this really thin, like, stream. I guess you could, like, use this by a doorway as, like, an air curtain to keep, like, bugs from coming in or something. I, I could see that as being useful. But besides that, I'm not, I, I can't really think of too many other uses for something like this where there's just a straight curtain up there, maybe drying like clothes or something. You have like a clothesline in your basement, maybe blowing it against a wet wall. So once it hits the wall, it kind of spreads out. It's, it's really powerful though. But I think I'm standing in the way of the camera. This is, I need some stupid camera placement in this video. Gonna have to take a look at that synchronous motor for the oscillation. I think I have a dead power fan or something. Well, actually, over here, I have a, if I can find it, 
Um, I, I think I still have it. I have a random synchronous motor over here somewhere. Which I know, I, I know it exists over here since I have seen it yesterday. I doubt I would have relocated it somewhere that's not here. Pretty quick. I I can only imagine how how much better this fan is once the blade set on it's clean. It probably moves way more air. The scraping noise is still audible on high speed, but the air movement kind of drowns it out. But it, it's still it's still there. There's medium and low on low speed. We're drawing 41 to watts. Medium is 37 and then it's 41 on high on amps. We got a solid 0.30 amps on medium and then on low we have 20. I'm uh, 25 amps. So, I will say this thing is crazy efficient, and with that low power factor, um, darn, with that high power factor, it's probably very efficient, um, and doesn't cost much to run. So, that's pretty nice. I have a feeling once I get the, uh, oscillator on this fixed, I'll probably use this fan a good bit. Um, and I will bring back our Honeywell HT900 friend and just do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. Place this to the firm star. If we can get it to sit here correctly. <laughs> I could say it's like six times bigger. Just compared to the HT900. So, there's this unknown manufacturer unknown age um i don't even know what size this is since i don't think i have my tape measure and actually yes i do because i didn't bring it home with me yet 17 inch um turbo foot and I, I don't really have much to say i might as well show you the close-up. I do remember tower fans like this having this, uh, this cover on them. I know the wind chasers had it, but those were a bit more higher quality, and they were known for uh, their tower fans being pretty good. Just notice that these vents here are kind of angled upward. Some screws there in the bottom. This kind of look, this kind of has like a uh, commercial look to it with how basic it is. Turn this off so you can see the blade set. It's like here on the top, it's extra dirty. It's not as bismal or as bismal of a another tower fan that I showed off in the past, but I think that one's just really bad because it's extremely dirty. Um, but eventually, I'll clean this. I don't know how soon. It might 
wait until the winter because I don't like cleaning tower fans. These things are an utter pain in the ass to clean and service, and I'm just not in the mood. So thank you very much for watching, and keep the breeze.